All right, so come in close, y'all. I don't even think this is something I've told my parents yet, but last year, I definitely thought about dropping out of medical school, and I'm gonna tell you why. Hey, y'all, welcome back to Made to Medicine with Vix. That's me. I'm a second year medical student at UICOM Chicago, and I come to you weekly with videos about my pre med term med school life and everything in between. So today, I'm gonna tell you why I actually truly and honestly considered dropping out of medical school. So let's take it back to September last year. Our first block exam was approaching and I felt like I had truly grasped the material. I'd gone over every single lecture. I got a tutor the week before our test. So we only got to meet maybe like four times. I was tripping on the tutor tip. I thought about it. Then like when I finally requested one, it took them a while to place me. I got in a small group, all these things, even though I asked for a one-on-one -on -one tutor, whatever. It finally happened. I found that the tutor was helpful, but in the end, I still failed the exam. And I remember our first exam, we actually got to take it at home. So I can't say the noise in the room were distracting me or this new environment or, you know, like I couldn't use any of those exterior things, those external forces because I was at home. Like I was at my own crib, the place I was so comfortable studying at, the place that I'd actually done Zoom tutoring sessions at, the place that like where I live, you know? And I remember it was about like maybe 20 minutes minutes left in the exam, my exam freezes, I can't go forward or backwards, but the clock still goes. And I'm like, how is this possible? How is it that the clock is ticking, but I can't do anything? So of course, I'm anxious. I'm freaking out. I'm contacting the proctor over Zoom like, hey, my exam, I still had 20 minutes left and I can't do anything, but she's proctoring. It was like, I don't know, maybe 50 of us on one Zoom. So it's taking her a while to get back to me. So I'm feverishly typing again, cause we were taking an exam on our computer and then you need like your phone up so they, so you could communicate. And I'm just like, yo, now it's down to 15 minutes. Now it's down to 10 minutes. And so she's communicating with someone on the back end. And at this point, I'm really just like, oh. What do I do? So I finally get some more time added on, but my cortisol levels are extremely high. I'm feeling like, why me? Why now? Why ever? Like, why is this happening? And they were finally able, after time has run out, I'm locked out of the exam now and it's for the review period. I'm like, well, I can't review it because I wasn't finished. They give me additional time to access the exam, but now my brain is all in a frenzy. I start changing answers that probably should have been left the same. Either way, I review the exam and see so many red asterisk marks. Wow, I really just failed this test. Like I really just failed and tomorrow I'm having a birthday party to celebrate my first birthday as a medical student. And everyone's going to be asking me, how was your first exam? How did it go? And I have to lie to them because I don't want people to know that I didn't do well. I don't want people to think that I've been wasting my time. I, as one of my very good friends would tell me, I care too much about what other people think. There's no other way to say it. So that's exactly what happened though. Everyone's asking. But before we even get to that part, I immediately called Darius and I'm just like, I'm stupid. And I'm crying on the phone. I'm not even a very like that type of emotional person. I'm crying and I'm like, I don't belong here. I don't deserve a spot. They made a mistake. Like what's going on? I can't do this. He let me get it all out. And he was like, all right, we're not gonna do that negative self-talk, but I'm gonna let you, like, don't let this ruin your birthday weekend. You still set for your first exam in medical school. And like, we live and we learn. But that was something very challenging and very difficult for me to grapple with because how did it take me all this time to get accepted? How did I do all this work to get here? All these jobs in the medical field, all these post back programs, all this debt that I'm in. And the very first exam I sit for, I fail. Yeah, I wasn't really for that. And so I immediately said, yeah, you know, I'm seriously thinking about dropping out. Like, and I'm, I'm being legit and real about this. I don't think that I can do this. I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Like, it's too hard. I just don't want to. And it took me until maybe like mid block two to actually start telling people like, yeah, I failed the exam. And so I've been studying for block one and block two exam throughout this time. It is quite challenging, but it's also making me be disciplined enough to get through what I need to. I don't have all that time to waste because I'm learning new material and also reviewing old material so that I don't have to repeat my first year of medical school. 
and it just brought up the the interesting thing of no one really talks about failure in medical school no one talks about the difficult times you go on social media you pretty much see like the highlight reels but you don't really see the nitty-gritty of what's truly going on like you're thinking like yeah i mean it's hard but everybody's doing it if everybody can do it i can do it i mean that is true you definitely can do it, but there are certain tools, certain steps, and certain information that you need to know in order to be successful while you're here. And it just made me, I wanted to get more comfortable with my truth because I did create this channel telling you that I'm going to be authentic, relatable, and transparent. But I didn't really want to tell y'all that I failed my exam. <laughs> Cause I'm like, if I tell them that I fell, I already got trolls telling me that I don't deserve to be here. And then when you down low and somebody kick you again, you just like, I'm out, three taps. I'm out, I'm done, that's a wrap. But I had to think about me. For once, I couldn't think about y'all or anybody else because I do care too much about what other people are thinking. But I couldn't think about you because at the end of the day, I had to sit there for that retake examination. I had to put in the work to study for the extra tutoring hours, the extra practice questions, the extra long nights. Like I had to do that work. So who cares about a troll telling me like, blah, 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 whatever, because I mean, I don't care. I couldn't think about any of that. And I also had to think about the people who are coming after me or the people who are before me who struggled and who were depressed throughout all of this because they felt like they had to keep it in. And that brings me to this year when I was talking on the UMED panel for orientation week, I straight up told them like, look, when exam time comes around, your cortisol levels are gonna be high. You're gonna be kind of freaking out, not gonna know what to do. Are you studying the right way? Am I preparing right? I'm like, you won't know until you know because you don't know if something's working until it's not. And that's the harsh reality of it all. But I was was very honest with them and said I felt that first exam it sucked it knocked me down and it hurt but I'm so happy that before I could tell everyone I had a few people that I confided in who were supportive of me because I did trust my tutor enough to let him know like hey I felt this exam what am I gonna do and he really affirmed me let me know like I'm still brilliant I'm still smart he knows I did put in the work but we're just gonna tweak a couple of things to make sure that I come out on the other side the right way. So this school year, I congratulated the M1s in their Slack channel, letting them know like, hey, you completed your first medical school exam. I hope it went well. And if it didn't, I failed the exam last year. If you want to talk to somebody, talk to me. Because I really wish that an M2 or M3, somebody in upperclassmen had talked to me last year so that I would have known that like, I'm not the first, which you do know, but internally you still feel like you are the first. And to know that there is a support system there in place to help guide me throughout the way. So that was like a really, really dark time for me. And I can honestly say like, yeah, I was depressed. And I genuinely thought about dropping out. I was like, yo, I can't take too much more failure. And if the failures keep on coming, I'm gonna be going on out the door. But now I know like, in life, I'm going to face adversity, whether it's in medicine or whether it's in my personal life. Like adversity is there and I can't just run away from it or turn the other way. I have to face it head on. And I want all of y'all to know that like, just because you have not passed something, it doesn't make you a failure. It doesn't mean that you don't deserve a spot. It doesn't mean that the work you put in wasn't vain. It just means that you got some adjustments to make. And I say this so often, med school is about flexibility. It's about making adjustments. It's about being malleable. Shoot to live is about being that because what works today on a Tuesday may not work on a Tuesday five years from now or five weeks from now or next Tuesday, you know, like things are just so different and it is important to give yourself grace. And if you don't know what grace looks like think about when your friend is going through something and how you uplift and motivate them if you wouldn't say it to a friend and i'm assuming you are kind people <laughs> if you wouldn't say it to a friend don't say it to yourself you never call a friend stupid you never tell them they don't deserve their spot you never tell them that this was a mistake you say hey it happened how are we gonna move from here i can help you i'll support you i'm there for you i'm rooting for you so I want you to say those same words to yourself. Even though I thought about dropping out, not just in block one, not just in block two, definitely in block three when we hit musculoskeletal and anatomy. Cause anatomy was really something else. I started to get with COVID and it was just like, but although I thought about it, then I also go back to my why and thinking about how much the hood needs love too and how they need to see us represented in medicine, like black and brown people. And like my community growing up, there were no doctors that looked like me in my own community. I didn't have my first black doctor till I was well into my 20s. That is something that has to change. And so I just want to continue to be an inspiration, 
not only to y'all, but I want to continue to inspire myself. Like, yes, these obstacles have come before, but I'm going to keep rising above and overcoming them. I hope y'all were able to take something away from this video. I, I'm really working on just continuing to be my true and authentic self with y'all and taking you through the highs and the lows of medical school. Doubt will creep in, but you're more than a conqueror. You can overcome that negative thinking, those negative thoughts. Like, you can overcome any of that. But if you haven't done so already, please be sure to click and like this video, subscribe to my channel, turn those notifications on, and comment down below. I just wanna hear from y'all. Tell me hi, send me some words of support. I do have an exam coming up momentarily, like in a few weeks for brain and behavior. So we'll see if my cortisol levels start to rise. But right now I'm chilling, understanding and just navigating through this chaos life of medical school. But I hope to see y'all back here next week and check out my community tab where I'm letting y'all know all the videos I'll be talking about as we're going through each month. Yes, I did think about dropping out of medical school. Yes, the thought does still cross my mind today. Do I think I'll actually do it? Probably not, but mm, guess we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Bye y'all, see you next week.